Hey, what is up guys? Blong on here. So today in this film, I'm giving you guys an entire tutorial through Kekoha Band Lab. So this is actually a two-part series. Tomorrow, the second part is going to be coming out. So we have the first part on Thursday, the second part on Friday. We're going back-to-back -back days because I really want to be as thorough as possible. I want to give you guys as much value as possible. So that's what we're doing today. I'm going to be just going through literally everything. Let's get into it. Woo! So let me first show you how to, how to install plugins into Cakewalk. Okay, so the main idea with getting plugins into Cakewalk is you want to have one specific folder where you keep all your plugins. So for example, this is my um, folder. It's in program files slash cakewalk slash vsts i made that folder myself it's just an arbitrary folder that i chose to use and then what you got to do is when you install your dll file your dot dll into that folder p in your keyboard go to vst settings and then click this little add button here you can actually look through these little folders here and you want to find the folder that has all of your vsts in it and then when you find it push ok here and it's going to add that folder to your directory of plugins and then after you have your folders your vst scan paths like all listed up here then push scan here and it's going to scan through all the folders that you've listed up here and it's going to find your plugins and make them available to you in the plugin window over here so now i'm going to show you a link to a sampler that you think that i think you should use and i'm also going to link you to my favorite free plugins that i'm probably going to be mentioning throughout the course of this video the main idea about getting plugins is that you want to ex kind of expand your directory of sounds you have for available so for example i'm going to open up expand right now it's a pretty budget um, plugin I got it when it was like five dollars on sale but how you add a plugin track in is hit plus sign here then go to the instrument tab out of these two tabs change your instrument from MIDI only to just click on the rectangle and then you can search through here to find the plugins you want to use so go to uncategorized and then scroll down a bit and you find expand too so you're only going to find plugins that you've already downloaded but since i have expand here i can use it now that you have your sound selected hit alt 3 on your keyboard and it's going to open up the MIDI window then hit shift D on your keyboard to make it full screen. Now, many people get confused during this section because there's not really any like guidelines that they don't really know what to follow. So they're just kind of like mindlessly placing notes and it doesn't really sound good together. So I want to recommend something to you that you don't necessarily have to use, but if you want to have your sound sound in key, then you can use it. So I want you to find this little sidebar here. It might be closed off to you, so you can hit this little expand button here and then you'll see a little bit bigger here. Then take this side arrow and drag it to the side and then right click on the name expand to hover over scales and select harmonic harmonic minor scales i choose the harmonic minor scales because it sounds best in my opinion for trap beats then right click on your thing again and then click enable disable snap to scale now that we're doing midi i want to talk to you about the tools if you hit t on your keyboard you open up the smart tools section and you have the option between the smart tool the selector tool the move tool the edit tool the draw tool and the erase tool. I'm going to show you what the draw tool does a little bit later in the video, but for right now, since we're only doing the MIDI of the melodies, let's hit the T in our keyboard and use the smart tool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a note. I'm going to choose on a C because that's the root note of the scale and maybe that'd be kind of nice. And then what I recommend is bring this out to a full measure. So it's an entire measure long and we're going to be making chords around these notes. So now we're going to go up to the ruler bar up here. That's doing the time measures and select over from five to one and then hit shift L on your keyboard to make a loop. We're gonna make the outline of what the chord progression is gonna be, but we're not gonna be trying to think of anything too complicated. We're just gonna be kind of making a melody. Let's play a melody that sounds like this. C, B, um, G, C, and let's make this a bit longer, and then D, F, So that's a little melody I made right here. Let me kind of explain things because I kind of brushed past a couple things. If you want to make a note shorter or longer, select on the end of the note and drag around. And that's assuming you're using the smart tool. If you want to move a note, click on it and drag to where you want it to be. If you want to cut a note in half, hold alt on your keyboard and click where you want to cut. And I think that's everything you need to know with MIDI. That's pretty simple. Now, so now let's make some basic chords out of these. I want you to click on the root note. I want you to skip one black note, play the next black note. Skip one black note, play the next black note. And by black notes, I mean the ones that aren't being whited out by the snap to scale feature. Now, now click on the root note and then do the same thing for this one. Skip one, place one. Skip one, place one. Now they do the same for this one. Click on the root note, skip one, Place one, skip one, place one.
that's pretty nice so now what i recommend you do is i recommend on some of these notes try to add like a seventh or ninth and if you don't know what that is basically i'm gonna explain it to you click on the root note of your chord and play notes way up here that sound good with the chord so maybe let's try a b that's better so the reason I keep telling you to click on the root note is because it actually makes it so that if you click on this note, your note, the note you next place is going to be that long. But if you click on this note, which is shorter, your notes are going to be that long. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to have a long note by clicking on one of these and then I'm going to play a B here. So it sounds like this. And then I want to play da. I was listening to the melody I like to have this G sharp here but these two notes right next to each other sound very dissonant so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select that note by right clicking on my keyboard and dragging over the note and then hit delete key on your keyboard so now so now let's make this sound a little bit better by holding control and right click dragging over the root notes of these chords in this case actually this g sharp way up here is actually the root note of the chord because if you bring it down by an octave which you're allowed to do with chords you have the place note skip one place one skip one place one so this g sharp is technically the root note of the chord so we're just gonna keep it way up there but remember that that one is the root note and now what i want you to do is hold control while you drag your notes down exactly by an octave what that means is we started on a c and we brought it down to a c so now it sounds like this So now what I usually do on my melody, so I'm gonna go up to process, transpose, and I'm gonna go transpose by, let's say two or three up. We're just trying to get a different idea, trying to like just change up the melody. So that sounds a little bit different. Basically what that just did was it just moved all the notes up a couple steps so that it just sounds a little bit higher. Now I'm going to show you kind of a cool effect. Hit this plus sign here, go to audio track, and then just leave this on none and push create. Hit F on your keyboard so everything's bigger again. And now what I want you to do is I want to go like this. Dun, 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 dun. We're going to have some like swell kind of sounds in here. This is going to be a little bit more complicated and you're not going to want to do this on every song, but I kind of want to give you some more interesting ideas of how to make melodies. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag this right side all the way down to five. So that is it exactly four bars loop and then go up to process retrograde and then push freeze right here. This is called free synth. And what free synth does is it transposes the entire MIDI track into audio. Now shorten this down to exactly five and then hold control and drag your audio track down to this track. Now push the freeze button again so that your stuff turns into MIDI. Then click on your MIDI track, go to process, retrograde. Then click on your audio track alone and then go to apply effect, reverse. Now let's listen to what it sounds like. Now let's listen to only the reverse thing alone. We can make this sound even better by hitting T on our keyboard, clicking on our, our, our edit tool, and then clicking everywhere that it has a change of chord. And then hit T on your keyboard, get your smart tool out, select your entire thing, and then drag this little top left corner towards the right, and that's going to give you a fade in kind of sound. And then just to make it sound a little bit better, nicer, we're going to go from the top right of the, the notes and bring it in just a tiny bit. I did a couple tiny adjustments and we listen together. So now click I on your keyboard and it's going to bring open this little sidebar here. So when you have the sidebar open, click on the track that has all the reverse stuff and turn that down because we don't want it super loud, but that is your way of um, mixing your sounds. You can click on a track and then turn up or down, click on another track and it changes there. 
if you hit alt 2 to your keyboard it's also going to bring up your console view if you hit shift d it makes it full screen and you can kind of see this is your first track this is the reverse audio track this is your master track where all of your sound comes out of so now that we have some nice chords going on let's add a top melody hit all three to open up the midi view and then go up to this right side and open up this little thing so you can see all your midi tracks make sure you're on the track that you want to be using that has your melody sound sounds like this and now let's add a top melody Okay, so I kind of breezed through that, but I, what I recommend is you just kind of go by ear, um, develop your ear, just try to play notes in that sound right. Um, there's not really a huge strategy to it. Just start placing notes down, make sure they fit in the kind of the key, make sure they sound right, make sure they sound like they fit, and you'll be fine. Now I am going to change the sound actually because I don't really like the sound, but that's the thing. Like I don't necessarily think that you should always find like the perfect sound before you get started. Like just choose a random sound and then make your melody and then change the sound. So. So I want to first speed it up. So how you how I recommend you speed it up is drag this um, thing to the left so that your audio clip is the entire length. Then go up here and change this 120 to maybe 140. That might work. And then since this is now not in the right timing anymore, um, get your smart tool out, hold con shift and control and drag from the right to exactly the five bar mark so that it's all synced up again. Now I also want to transpose up a little bit. So I'm going to select the entire thing, go to process, transpose, and let's go to like transpose up four and then change Elastic Pro to radius mix advanced because it sounds more accurate when you're using audio. So now I want to add some effects to this. How do you do that? Well, you can add effects individually to each sound, or you can add them as a, like a whole group. You can send all of your sounds to one bus and then affect them together. That's what I'm going to do here. So what you want to do is click on your first sound, go down here to the very bottom left where it says master and change master to new stereo bus. It's going to be, make a bus called bus D, bus D as you can see there. Click on your next track and make it go from master to bus D. And then check on your last track and make it go from master to bus D. So, so now all of your sounds are in bus D and you can, any th effects that you put on here are going to affect all three of them together. So you're not going to have this plugin right away, but it's called Crystallizer. Okay, so you add plugins by going to this right section. You open up these little folders and you just drag a plugin across. And this is what my melody sounds like right now. It's actually a little bit fast, actually. So I'm going to change it to 135. And then we'll slow this audio track down. And actually, now that I think about it, I want to pitch it down too. I 
I'm also going to add a plugin called Complete Control. And inside of Complete Control, I'm going to use a um, vocal chop. <laughs> Okay, so I just finished up that melody here and it sounds pretty cool right here. What I'd recommend to get something this quality is that you just keep practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing. Um, it's not your VSTs that are the problem, just the fact that you haven't had enough experience to make melodies like this. But I also recommend that when you when you think that you're done for the melody because you just want to be done with the melody, you want to move on to the drums, don't rush it. Don't rush it. Just keep going. Maybe you can add one more thing that will really tie your entire melody together to make it as good as it can possibly be. So that melody is pretty good. I could have added more to it, but I really want to show you guys everything there is to offer in Keiko of Band Lab. So if you like this video, hit the like button. If you like the subscribe button, um, hit the subscribe button because tomorrow's video is actually going to about the same exact topic i'm gonna continue off where i left off and it's gonna be just as good stay tuned for that one see you guys later Woo!